You can call me Sherlock Holmes. You have to use your powers of deduction with this disease when trying to figure out what causes a flare because I have lymphocytic colitis. Hi there. Welcome to episode 22 of my chronic illness journey. My name is Shay McIntosh Ford, otherwise known as Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and I live in Tulsa with my husband, our two boys, and our little puppy. This episode is coming to you very late because when I planned out when to release these episodes, I failed to take into account that I would be trying to record the intros and outros on a Saturday or even a Sunday. There was no quiet in this house this weekend. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm probably gonna change the release days. Maybe Mondays or Tuesdays. I think Tuesdays, yeah. I was diagnosed with lymphocytic colitis last April. So just about a year ago a couple weeks shy, and it was after my bout with COVID-19, which was in March of 2020. My doctor believes that COVID-19 is what triggered the lymphocytic colitis. And because it can be so difficult to find information on this condition, I decided to go ahead and vlog about it. And at the moment, I am sharing the recipes that I've been using. There aren't very many, to be honest, so this isn't gonna last very long. But the vlog is about how lymphocytic colitis affects my day-to-day -day life. I record what I eat and when, and if I've recorded a recipe for the food that I'm eating in this episode, I will put it in this little eye right up here in the corner, and I will also link it down below in the description box. I will also include any links that I found helpful down below in the description box, things that have helped me figure out what works. <laughs> And I drink only water, mostly sparkling water. I use SodaStream. And I make a homemade beef bone broth. And also, my body can tolerate a small teacup of, well, a teacup of black coffee every other day. I didn't get to drink too much coffee this week because it was not a good week. And as you will see, I do drink an occasional glass of organic, no sulfite added Cabernet wine. And this I drink if I am in too much pain to fall asleep at night. And only one glass. One glass is enough to put me to sleep. And because colitis is an irritable bowel disease, I will also talk about the more unpleasant parts, such as every time I have a bowel movement, because that can be more than once a day. When I do have a bad trip to the bathroom, I take a gluten-free version of Pepto-Bismol and Imodium, and the bismuth tablet tastes a little sweet to me, so every time I take it, my running joke is that it turns into a different dessert. Diet most certainly matters with this condition. I've been trying to figure out what works for me. So far, primarily a carnivore diet works, but I haven't incorporated much dairy other than ghee butter, or really any dairy. The only dairy I consume is the ghee butter because there's no casein in it, so it doesn't seem to bother me. But no eggs, no chicken, no pork. I eat primarily ruminant meats, so cattle, bison, lamb, and I've been able to reincorporate wild-caught salmon. Some people can't tolerate meat on this condition. Some people do better on a vegetarian diet, and that would tear me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's a little frustrating about this condition. And it's all about figuring out what works for you and avoiding cross-contamination. Because I learned a very valuable lesson this week, and you'll see. So the first part of this video is going to be my recipe for arm roast. It's a great go-to meat. The best thing about arm roast is it comes with the bone in that has a big chunk of marrow inside it. Bone marrow is wonderful for nutrients, so definitely eat that. And after that, we will go into my week. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna turn on the saute feature. And I'm going to use ghee butter, but you can use, if you can tolerate pork products, you can use lard or tallow if you want to, if you want a beef boil. Or if you can handle regular butter, you can also use regular butter as well. I don't recommend olive oil because it oxidizes just like a seed oil. And you also want to wait because you want it to be hot. Because the hotter the pot is, because it's stainless steel, the least, least likely the meat will stick to the pan, even with the, the butter in it. And you want to coat the bottom, make sure it's nice and covered. And then I'm going to take my pink Himalayan salt. And again, it's not a frou frou salt for me. I use a salt grinder because the salts at the grocery store, like the pre-ground salts, 
they can be cross-contaminated with spices. I'm gonna go ahead and cut open the bag, but I'm not gonna take it out just yet. I am trying to set it up so that it doesn't fall over because there's uh, juices in there that will spill all over the counter. So I'm gonna set it up and try to keep it from spilling. I am going to wash my hands with soap and dry them with a paper towel to reduce the risk of cross-contamination because my kitchen is not gluten-free. And I'm going to be adding some more salt to the top. Because I don't eat processed foods, the only way for me to get salt is to make sure I heavily salt my food. So if it seems like I'm adding a lot of salt, it's because from a standard American diet perspective, yes I am but there is no salt in my food otherwise. But you're gonna let it just saute for about 10 minutes. And before I flip it over, um, I like to just make sure that that ghee butter is, again, coated on the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over once, and then saute it for another 10 minutes. And now we're ready to add our water. I, it's not exact, I put in a, a little over a cup, maybe a cup and a half of just plain water pop the lid on, pressure cook it for, the last thing I cooked was bone broth, so that's why it's three minutes. But you wanna pressure cook for 45 minutes and you wanna make sure it's set to high. And then when that drops down, the little pressure indicator drops down, um, that means it's naturally released and it takes about 25 minutes Right there it's 28 minutes and that's fine but you just want to let it naturally release its pressure and there's my beautiful roast the first thing i do is i try to take the the well i do i just take the middle bone out sometimes you have to kind of cut away some of the meat but it, it a lot of times it just slides right out that's the beauty of pressure cooking it literally falls off the bone and there's that beautiful marrow on the inside. It's full of great nutrients. So you just kind of cut around the, the rim of the bone right there and try not to drop it. And then cut around the rim on the other side. You don't have to go deep, just kind of loosen it up. And then it just literally slides right out. And then you just throw that away. And I will cut away some of the marrow because the plate, that blue plate is my big dinner size plate. That's what I use to store it because I don't eat the whole roast in one sitting. And so I'll cut a little bit and put it on the little salad plate that I eat from. And the big part of the roast goes on the dinner plate. And this big part, it might be a little too much for me to eat. I might put some more back on the dinner plate, but I like to eat as much as I can when it's freshly cooked because it is really good when it's fresh. It's still good when it's not fresh, when it's been reheated, but it's best when it's fresh. And then I take a couple of pint-sized mason jars, only two, usually I can fit all the broth into two. And you wanna save all that broth. Now this broth I won't be using if I'm fasting because it still has protein bits in it. So, um, you know, otherwise I would filter it out. I mean, I could, but I'm not picky at this point. If I were planning on fasting, I would filter that out. And when you put the rings on, you wanna take a dishcloth because those jars are very hot and get them nice and tight and let them sit for about an hour before you put them in the fridge. And that's it. Good morning. It is Sunday, which means liver for breakfast and ghee butter. And it's coffee day. I did eat wine last night, unfortunately. I don't know what's causing my cramping. I'm wondering if maybe it was the stress of having to get numb at the dentist again. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I will not be cramping after this food because technically I could wait to eat. I don't want to because it's liver and I need my vitamins from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat now and I don't know, maybe I won't have a second meal today. We'll see. Good morning. I am in the closet because that dog has heard something. It's not thunder because there's no rain going, going on right now. It's probably a dumpster or some big, like a dump truck or something. I don't know what it is, but she won't let me sit at my desk. I am having ground bison with beef bone broth bits and ghee butter. 
and I'm going to eat it in the closet. <laughs> she keeps scratching at the boys' doors and they're not awake yet. They're not ready to get up yet. It's still a little too early. I did not eat yesterday um, a second meal because I, I realize now that I'm in this sort of cycle where I will eat and then have some pain. The last time I was in this cycle, I fixed it with fasting. I'm going to try, so this is not quite a true 24-hour fast because I was in pain last night and needed wine to fall asleep. I will eat this morning and hopefully I'll feel better tonight and won't need the wine so I can do a true 24-hour fast because I'm cramping a lot and that's frustrating. I'm going to try to go to yoga and uh, see how I do. It depends on how I feel after I'm done eating. Anyway, I'm going to eat in the closet with my chicken dog. I'm glad I chose not to go to yoga this morning. Part of it was because I was still hurting after having eaten, but also because I wasn't sure if Scout was still going crazy. She's not, so that's good. At least there's that. Jelly beans. Not the Birdie Bots ones. <laughs> And I think I forgot to say that yesterday I did go on a walk with Hubby. We went down to the river and walked, I want to say about 30 minutes. I forced him to go at my pace, but even then after a while I was like, nope, we gotta turn around. <laughs> I was starting to get some spasmy cramps and I wasn't sure it was, if it was going to mean that I was going to urgently need a bathroom and there were none along the walk. So this belt of diarrhea, I don't know what caused it. If it's still this cycle of eat and hurt, eat and hurt, that I should break with fasting. I might try to fast for 36 hours since I kind of did a 24 hour fast, except for the glass of wine. I'm gonna do my absolute best to not drink any wine tonight, even if I am hurting, so that I can get a 36 hour fast in because yeah, I just I gotta break this pain cycle. Maybe the cycle was caused by That soy laced salmon <laughs> from Applebee's. It could have been the walk yesterday Well, no, I was hurting before that. I think the walk was just a contributing factor. So, I don't know I think maybe the soy threw my body out of whack. That's my best guess Good morning. I was able to do a full 24 hour fast. Hopefully that resets everything. And yes, I'm wearing the same workout clothes as yesterday during the recording because I didn't work out. Might as well wear them again. I am getting ready to go to a workout at 11 with my personal trainer. I could wait to eat, but he'll probably give me grief for it if I do, since it's been more than 24 hours since I've eaten. I mean, I could wait a little longer and I probably should. We'll see how I do. Now that this is a full, true 24 hour fast, maybe that's enough to reset my lymphocytes and make them stop firing at me. <laughs> if I do have an issue, then I'll do a 24 hour fast. I'll probably do a 36 hour fast tomorrow from this point on if I have trouble with after this meal. I'm doing pretty, pretty good pain wise right now. Hopefully this meal doesn't set my lymphocytes off again. Cause that's pretty much, I, you know, I had to look it up again just to refresh my memory as to what exactly, exactly is going on to cause me this pain. So I had too many lymphocytes in my colon and the lymphocytes are your white blood cells that attack foreign invaders. And in my case, I'm pretty sure that it's the soy in that fish from Applebee's. My lymphocytes are like, okay, we don't want this. We're going to attack it and we're gonna keep attacking until we don't have anything else to attack. So I think that's why fasting works. So for breakfast, I'm finally talking about my breakfast. I've got ground bison in the beef bone broth bits with ghee butter. It's a coffee day. And if I wasn't eating and still fasting, then I would just go ahead and drink coffee because that won't break your fast unless you add sugar and cream to it, which I'm not, not going to do because that would trigger my lymphocytes some more. Hopefully my workout goes okay. I'm not eating. I am hurting. I am already in my PJs. There's a bit to unpack here. I'm gonna go to bed early. Try to go to bed about eight, drinking the wine so I can fall asleep. We only have like three wine glasses and none of them made it into the dishwasher in the last washing. I'm drinking it redneck style tonight. I 
did have a lot of pain from my workout. <laughs> I got through it. I don't think he pushed me very hard because of the situation. I did have a moment where I had some intense spasming and I had to stop for a minute, but I was able to get through the whole thing. I don't, I don't think he did all of the exercises that he would normally have done. I'm gonna do a 48 hour fast starting tomorrow because I, I forgot that tomorrow's Wednesday and so, which means liver. So I am going to eat liver early tomorrow, then start my 48 hour fast after that. And hopefully I won't need wine. I mean, it's not intense pain, but it's, it's enough to make me super uncomfortable and I won't be able to fall asleep. So the reason I'm going to bed early, one, you know, I am tired enough to sleep. I'm not extra tired. We are anticipating a thunderstorm tonight. So I have a strong suspicion Scout is gonna wake me at one in the morning and I'm gonna end up sleeping in the closet with her. <laughs> Cause if I try to stay in bed to sleep, she won't let either of us sleep. I actually went out and I got a foam mattress topper and as long as I fold it really well, I'll be able to sleep comfortably. Cause I've been sleeping on a camp mat every time I need to get in the closet in the middle of the night with her. It's just, it's so hard on my hips and I end up tossing and turning all the time. So that is why I'm already in my PJs and drinking my wine early. Normally I just, I try to drink it about 45 minutes before I go to sleep. As soon as I finish my wine, I'm going to bed because <laughs> I'm probably gonna wake up in the middle of the night because of the dog. I love thunderstorms, actually. They help me sleep more, but not if I have a anxious dog. Good morning. I am still in my PJs because today is a virtual day. I have no plans to go anywhere for several more hours. I am going to go ahead and eat. I did, by the way, need to spend the half the night in the closet, so I'm glad I went to bed early because I knew I was going to get interrupted in my sleep. It is Wednesday, so it's time for liver. After this, I'm going to do a 48-hour fast to hopefully reset everything and get my gut back to no, no more pain after eating. My teeth have finally healed and yet, <laughs> like one thing after another. Hopefully I won't need wine tonight because of the liver. I will do my very best not to drink it. And we don't have any thunderstorms coming up tonight. Hubby has the computer. He's had it all afternoon, but I'm having some issues. I'm not like terribly hungry. Like I could keep fasting and this is weird. So I was doing okay ever since. So yesterday, you know, I had liver and ghee butter. I had a jar of bone broth and I was still okay. Maybe a little uncomfortable, but then all day today I was fine just drinking water. And then this afternoon I had another jar of bone broth and I started cramping. <laughs> My thought is because hubby also uses the instant pot to make his um, pork shoulder. He uses olive oil to cook it. Normally olive oil is not terrible for you, not like seed oils. I never had a problem with it when I was on keto. I haven't had it since I've been carnivore. Maybe I do have a problem with olive oil, but it could also be because he uses it in the instant pot, which heats it up high when he sautés the pork shoulder. The Instant Pot is stainless steel, it's easy to clean, but the seal is like a rubber or a silicone seal. I can feel the olive oil when I go to wash it before I make my food. So I'm wondering if maybe that cross-contaminated somehow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and break my fast because I'm gonna have wine tonight because I'm hurting. And I still have one last bowl of beef bone broth bits with ground bison in ghee butter. I added a couple of tallow discs or a tallow disc from one of the jars, actually the jar that I had this afternoon. I'm gonna hurt anyway because of this. This is what I have ready, but I wanna break my fast so that I can start over tomorrow or after this. After the wine that I have, I I don't, that's the only thing I can think of. And it really stinks because I have six jars of bone broth still in the fridge, a container of the discs from the tops of a bunch of them. I was gonna use them all, but I think I'm just gonna have to give them to hubby now. That's where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and eat and have some wine and go to bed. I had a rough night. I woke up about quarter to three. I had to go pee, but then I had to do a lot more than that. Came really close to vomiting where I had just been pooping. <laughs> Not pleasant. 
turns out I had to poop some more. Then the urge to vomit finally went away. Like it wasn't just a little nausea, it was like I was ready to literally throw up. So I did take my anti-diet reels, walked through the dark house at 3 a.m. to take those. So I didn't record because it was 3 a.m. Before, when I had the wine, I was still in pain and so I drank just a little bit more. So I'm pretty sure that it was the broth. Olive oil, when you, like I said before, you cook it at high heat, it oxidizes, and it's no better than seed oils at that point. I think my broth was cross-contaminated with some olive oil in that silicone seal. That doesn't happen with animal fats, butters, and lard and tallow. The hubby's gonna switch to just using butter. Hopefully, I don't react to the casein in the butter. So what I'm gonna do, instead of fasting, because I need to get back into the gym, I was kinda hoping to go yesterday or today, but I'm still gonna give my body a break. But I am going to make an arm roast later on after I take the boys to school. Give that a try. We're gonna, we have a replacement silicone band. I'll uh, put the new one in and hopefully I'll be okay. Feeling a little better this morning, just tired and still crampy. Yesterday was supposed to be a coffee day, but because I was fasting, I decided to wait because I like my coffee with food. Now I think I'm gonna wait on the coffee another day. We'll see what happens after I eat some arm roast. We'll have coffee hopefully tomorrow. So I'm ready to eat. I've got arm roast in, I, I mean, technically in ghee butter. This is not the arm roast that is at the beginning of this video. I recorded that a long time ago and was waiting to use it. But unfortunately with this arm roast, so angry, <laughs> it had a lot of bone marrow in it. As I was transferring it out of the instant pot onto the plate, it absolutely fell and most of the bone marrow wound up on the counter. Obviously, I'm not gonna eat from there. There's very little bone marrow in this meal. That's super frustrating. I'm still uncomfortable. We'll see how I feel after I eat this. That'll tell me if I should eat tomorrow. At least I'll have some broth from this. That's where I'm at. Sorry for the background noise, but I've got the little robotic vacuum going and the washing machine, so a little noisy back there. But I'm ready to eat. I'm feeling much better. I'm still a little bit uncomfortable, and I did need some wine last night, but I'm definitely feeling better. I do think it was the oxidized olive oil in my bone broth. I mean, I didn't put it in there. It was cross-contaminated. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and eat. I am going to have some leftover arm roast in ghee butter. There's not a lot of butter in here. I used the, one of the tops from the broth that came with the arm roast, which was ghee butter. I probably should have put a little bit more in here, but oh well. I decided since I'm feeling better, it's been several days, so I'm gonna make today a coffee day because it's been a long time since I've had coffee because I was feeling so bad. Doing good today. I'm gonna try to do a workout later on this afternoon. I might try to wait until later on in the day like see what time they close because I feel like Saturdays are, they're busy, you know? I mean, it's not a lot of people in there, but most people party on Saturday nights. So if I go on Saturday night, there won't be so many people. I really wanted to go Thursday or Friday, but I wasn't feeling well. I also forgot to say that the reason why I'm eating now instead of earlier was because the boys had a scout function early this morning. We just got back. That's why I waited to eat, not because of any other reason. <laughs> And I will leave it here. I hope I've helped you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, your pants are so muddy. I have a feeling. vacuum. It was a mess back there. I uh, blocked it off so that it focuses just on that back room because it's just, <laughs> that floor is beautiful. If you have any questions,